welcome to part three of our videos. In this video, I'm going to start with an introduction. So if you'd like to skip to the, let's say the meat of the video, I'll put a timestamp below if you want to do that. But I want to do um, a nice introduction to explain what we're doing with these videos. And then also that this video, if people just come across this video for the first time, it'll kind of make sense what, we, what we've been doing. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. So what we're doing with these videos and I've kind of, I haven't like um, said what we're doing clearly because I didn't want to say we're doing a playlist or we're doing a series this time and just wanted to, you know, make some videos and not put pressure on myself, committing myself to a series, but we are doing something that's ongoing. Okay, so let me explain. So what we're looking, or what we're trying to do is explore the history from Libya to Morocco. So focusing on the history of North Africa. So we're not focusing, you know, directly on Egypt or Kush, but this region of North Africa. And then I chose the Philistines as a way to get into that, you know, that exploration. Because, you know, we do have a lot of information on Egypt. And obviously, there's always more to learn. But we do have a fair, um, let's say like a clearer picture of the history of Egypt. And even with Kush, but you know, there's definitely more we could learn about Kush, I would think as well. But this history for Libya to Morocco, you know, just sharing with you my personal feeling, you know, it's, um, well, definitely we could say there's like a mysterious element to it. And I don't think that we have a, you know, like a, a clear picture of this ancient history of this North African region, and you know, maybe like a story that's not being told. So this, that's what we're attempting. And we cho I chose the Philistines to do that. But when we kind of went on that trail, we, um, we started working with this map and now we have these tribes here and now we're also looking at the Mediterranean, let's say with this modern day country of Italy. So we're supposed to be focusing on North Africa, but now we've also got Italy to think about. And then maybe as, the, as we go along with these videos, it'll become a bit clearer, you know, well, that's the, hopefully the plan. So, um, okay, so let me explain the, how we got this map. So we looked at the Philistines and we looked at this um, this depiction of this this rock relief. Could this be Philistines? And then when we focused a bit more in on the Philistines, it brought us to the Sea Peoples, a mysterious confederation that caused a lot of devastation in the Bronze Age, even tried to invade Egypt. But then, you know, the Sea Peoples must have been very important in the ancient world. But the scholars, are not in agreement. There's still a lot of uncertainty about their origin and a lot of like a mysterious element to the Sea Peoples. And I just created this map just to like ask the question, is it really actually, um, are they not making it more difficult than it actually is? You know, when you put it on the map like this, is there not like a, a clearer picture how you can see there could be a confederation? You know, so it's just, that's all I was asking, is there not, you know, straightforward maybe a bit with the Sea Peoples, if you just let the information kind of speak for itself. But then I showed you the map of, let's say more of the accepted view of where the origin would be and where this history is happening. We see the origin for the Sea Peoples here, more to the Eastern Mediterranean, and this is where all the destruction is happening. But what is the truth to this history and the Sea Peoples? So that's what we, you know, obviously, um, you know, going to be investigating. Okay, so we're getting closer to the end of the introduction and the update, but we also spoke about Goliath, the Philistine champion. And scholars are asking, you know, was he a Greek champion, you know, in terms of his armaments? So we spoke about that. But I'm also just going to ask in this video, you know, was he actually Greek? So not just, you know, his armaments, you know, was he a Greek? Okay, so that's going to be what we um, exploring in this video, and that's a bit of a update so that you get an idea of what we're actually doing in these videos. So now that's maybe a bit more clearer. Let's get into the video. We're going to be looking at this word, a kish. Now it says here that there were two Philistine rulers of Gath called a kish, 
and it says it is perhaps only a general title of royalty applicable to the Philistine kings. Now when I've been researching these Philistines I came across this um, what could be quite interesting here. Let me read this out to you. Yet Master clarifies that at this point in history the Philistines still thought of themselves as distinct as evident in the 7th century inscription from the Philistine city of Ekron. The inscription names Ekron's king as Ikausu, which means Achaean or Greek. The name Ikausu, sorry, Ikausu or Akesh also appears in 1 Samuel 21.10 as Gath's king. Okay, so let's try and make sense of this. So we have the two kings of a uh, sorry, we have the two kings of Gath, so a city of the Philistines called a Kesh. Now the Philistines are interesting because in the Bible we learned that there were five lords of the Philistines. So the you know I think the five lords for the five cities. So there wasn't you know one king or one lord over all the Philistines. They had five lords over the five cities. So there were two rulers over the city of Gath called a Kesh. But here we have a a different city of the Philistines. So Ekron and the inscription calls him Ikausu and now this, according to this page and this scholar that this Ikausu is the same word as a Kesh so another ruler called a Kesh they're saying that it has the meaning of Achaean or Greek so this could be um, important now remember when we were looking at the sea peoples you know we said that it seems to be largely a Greek um, confederation so we see the Denyen as Greeks the Ekwesh as Greeks, but notice they call them Achaeans. So this word Achaean being connected with what's Greek. And then there was an, another one, I think. So the Weshesh, also Greeks and also being called Achaeans. So then how did the Philistines fit into this? Because we see we have the Philistines being connected to the Peliset. So this is how it could be um, showing that connection that if the leaders of the Philistines were actually Achaeans or Greek. Um, let me show you that again. So, the, the, these leaders of the of the Philistines, carrying the name Ikausu or Akesh, which means Achaean or Greek. So then, can can we say that the you know some of these leaders of the Philistines were Greek or Achaeans? So then we can see how the Philistines. Or, sorry, it would make sense why the Philistines are connected with this the Sea Peoples and the Sea Confederation, which is, seems largely like a Greek um, confederation, you know, when their leaders could be Achaeans or Greeks. So I think that could be a very important link. But it gets more intriguing, and this will make sense to those that have been following the channel for a while, but it might be new to the new subscribers. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, thank you for joining and subscribing. And if you'd like to write a comment saying um, how you're finding the channel if you may be a bit confused about the channel or if you've got some questions yeah, please ask and um, I'll see if I can yeah, just give you some advice about where to go or give you some help so yeah I welcome the questions okay so I did say in the previous video this could challenge how you view the Greek world and what you think about the word Greek when you hear it so let's get into that so we're going to study this word now, a kish. Now it's interesting when you go to the page on a kish. Now this um, website, Abarim Publications, for me they seem to be very good with their with their meanings for these names. So now when they say the etymology is unclear for a kish, it's very interesting. But there is a link with the biblical Kush. So they say that you know, there is a link with the biblical Kush. And then when you think about that, then it does kind of, you can kind of see it. So now when you have that connection in your mind and you see the word a Kish, then you can say, well, actually, that does look quite um, plausible, you know, that it's connected with Kush. But then it says here, that won't help trying to establish the meaning of a Kish because the meaning of Kush is also missing in action. So if we go to their page on Kush, we see unclear. So isn't that quite um, fascinating that um, 
we have you know a major character in the bible called Cush and even coming you know into our times with all the information that we have available to us according to this page we don't know what Cush means so I'm just going to give you my um, thoughts on that I do think there could be a plausible explanation why we don't know the meaning and let me just update those that are new to the channel in case you're not if you haven't seen this um, just wait for my internet to load so we did say we put in forth the theory could the Greek god Zeus be the biblical Kush so they're one and the same and if you'd like to pause this video and watch this one I'll put this video in the maybe in the first comment below then you can watch that and get updated with the yeah why I'm starting to take this more seriously and this bit of evidence with the son of Abraham by Keturah called Zeus so this could really um, it could help trying to understand the ancient world and this history this detail if it's true connecting the Greek god Zeus with the biblical Kush so maybe that's why you know they're not able to get to the meaning or the etymology because um, maybe you need to try explore the avenue of Zeus to get maybe to try get an idea of what this actually means so there's actually a mystery around this word Kush it could just be a variation of Zeus so it's not going to be a let's say like a Hebrew word necessarily where they can tell us the meaning so hopefully that um, well I think that could give a, an explanation why there's mystery around this but then it's also going to impact what we're speaking about in this video if we just recap that on a Kesh because now remember these Philistine kings could be carrying the title that they are an Achaean or they're a Greek but we see it's connected with this word a Kesh so does that mean like of Kush so that's what we've been speaking about on the on the channel is you know is what's Greek actually coming from Kush and these Achaeans would then also be coming from Kush so yeah, I did say this could challenge your um, yeah, things that you've learned and studied but is it you know we obviously want to know the truth that's what's important you know, it's not about um, we're not trying to upset people deliberately even though you know it might upset people it's about you know that um, wanting to know the truth of our past and our history so I would like to now show you in this video another way we can link um, the Greek gods Zeus with the biblical Kush so a different way but it's also going to be relevant to what we want to speak about with this history of North Africa so let's get into that part of the video okay so we did use a source called Salust and he was speaking about the Jogothian War so this is North African history um, yeah so that's obviously going to be important for us but it speaks about Hercules so another character in the mythology so Hercules is a he's not a god he's a demigod and you know according to the mythology and also just for people that are you know we don't want to assume everybody is at the same point with their geography and things like that so let's not make assumptions I just want to let you know that we do have what's known as the pillars of Hercules now the Straits of Gibraltar which is this point between Spain and Morocco also known as the pillars of Hercules so there is there does seem to be like a trail of evidence with the, even the geography of some of these stories of Hercules and his labors and his journeys so we can see how Hercules is being connected with North Africa and also with the Mediterranean so I want to just pick this part out it's very interesting so it says that the uh, that the Africans they thought that Hercules died in Spain but he's campaigning in this region and he's bringing with him in his army the Medes the Persians and Armenians so isn't that interesting that speaking about Hercules so a Greek character but he hasn't got Greeks in his army he's got Medes Persians and Armenians so that doesn't quite make sense on the face of it you know why is he not coming with a Greek army so we'll try to see if we can explain that um, but then when Hercules dies the Medes Persians and Armenians they stay in the region so his army remains so that kind of gives us something to think and think about now with this history of North Africa that if this is true 
Hercules bringing Medes, Persians and Armenians into North Africa and then remaining behind, we should be looking for evidence for Persians and Medes and Armenians. Is it true? We're going to be focusing on the Persians in this video. Just focusing on the Persians. Now there is another source that's I think it's Pliny the Elder. So Pliny the Elder and his natural history. He speaks about the Farusi, descended from the ancient Persians, are said to have been the companions of Hercules. So a different um, scholar also speaking about Hercules and North Africa and the Persians but there's actually there was a tribe in North Africa called the Parusi so now we actually have a uh, more evidence and we can see how the you know the similarities of Parusi and the Persians so isn't you know it's getting quite intriguing now because this scholar you know how do, how do I phrase it you know obviously a lot of modern scholars are going to doubt and throw doubt on this um, on this historian because it just seems, well, they don't know what to do with the information. But then you find another scholar saying, well, there is actually, there was actually a tribe called the Farusi in North Africa. So it lends support to that. But let's keep going because this is where it really starts to get intriguing. Okay, I want to read you this. Um, this is from a. Um, a scholar called Plutarch. I don't want to lose my place and show you his name because, um, but yeah, I think it's Plutarch. I'll put these in the description below. Also speaking about Hercules and North Africa, so it's the same kind of history. I just want to read this part. Um, I want to read from here. Diodorus, to whom many of the Libyan people became subject since he had a Greek army composed of the Olbians and Mycenaeans who were settled in those parts by Hercules. So we can't be sure but is this describing the same story or is it a different story? But it's interesting now because it also says that Hercules, so speaking about Hercules in North Africa, but now it is actually saying that he's coming with a Greek army. So now this makes more sense because you know Hercules is a Greek character and now he's bringing a Greek army so that makes sense. But the other source is coming with Medes, Persians and Armenians. So he said that didn't quite make sense on the face of it. So I don't want to um, say it's definite, but you know, is this actually speaking about the same history? And that's what I want to try um show you that could this actually be linked with the with both stories? So hopefully it'll make sense as I try to go through this. So now we're going to focus on the Mycenaeans. And I'm not an expert in this, you know, this this Greek history. So I don't want to try to portray that I'm a, you know, I'm an expert or anything. So just to just for simple, to keep it simple, um, Mycenaean, it's just another way of saying Greek. So it's just a, let's say like an older, um, the older Greek civilization, the older Greek culture. So it's just another way of saying Greek. But obviously, you know, you could m make it more complicated than that. But um, we're going to sp speak about the Mycenaeans. Okay. So we're also now going to go into the mythology. And hopefully this is going to shed some light on this. We're going to speak about Perseus. Now Perseus was another famous son of Zeus. So Hercules, a very famous son of Zeus. Now we have Perseus, a very famous son of Zeus. But remember, if you're new to the, the, the channel, remember we're making that connection. Is the Greek god Zeus really the biblical Cush? So that would mean Perseus descended from Cush. Okay, I'm going to jump down now to where it says that Perseus was the king of Mycenae. Okay, so what's Mycenaean is connected with Perseus. So his sons would be the princes of Mycenae. But now we're thinking if that information is true, is what's Mycenaean coming from Kush? So it's what's Greek coming from Kush? Okay, but it gets interesting because when we look at one of these sons of Perseus called Perses, it says that he was left, Perses was left in Kosei. And when we explore this Kosei, 
Pliny calls them the Kusi. So now it's starting to look quite similar to the word Kush. And then we can even see this potential connection with Kuzistan. So the land of Kuz. Is that, you know, speaking about the land of Kush. So I'm not saying it's definite. It's obviously a part of a theory. But is it saying that Perses was left in Kush? So I just wanted to show you this as another way of trying to strengthen that connection between the Greek god Zeus and the biblical Kush. Because why are these characters in the Greek mythology being left in Kush? You know, if that is accurate. So another way of looking at that. And there are some other ones as well that we've covered on the channel. And maybe we can bring those out again as well if people would like to know those ones if they're interested in that. But yeah, let me focus in on this now because to, what, what, what I want to try, um, or what I'm asking, because I'm also just exploring with you, the um, this scholar said that Her um, Hercules brought Persians to North Africa, and then this other scholar said that it was you know Mycenaeans. So is it actually speaking about the same story? And are the Persians connected with the Mycenaeans? So I'm just trying to show you that it might be actually, you know, that might be true. So if I just got to recap that again. So Perseus, the one of the famous sons of Zeus, he's described as the king of Mycenae, you know, so the founder of the Mycenaeans. And then when we look at one of his sons, it says that Greek mythology identified Perseus as the ancestor of the Persians. Apparently the Persians knew the story as Xerxes tried to use it to bribe the Argives during his invasion of Greece, but ultimately failed to do so. So now we see a character of um, a descendant of Perseus, so the founder of the Mycenaeans, and one of his descendants being the ancestor of the Persians. So in the same family tree, we have a connection with the Mycenaeans and the Persians. So to me, that could be saying that both of these historians could be, you know, correct in what they're saying. That Hercules is coming with Persians, but this other scholar is saying that he's coming with Mycenaeans. But it could be saying the same thing. So that um, Hercules is bringing a Greek army, but there's different ways of um, describing it. So very interesting information because it could help us with this picture or trying to understand this untold story of North Africa. So, are there Persian? Um, sorry, yeah, is Persia a part of this ancient history of North Africa? And then we did see the that there is there's some good evidence for that with the tribe known as the Parusi in North Africa. And then we're now we're also asking, is there a, a Mycenaean element to North African history? So let's say like a Greek element to North African history. So then we'd be looking for evidence of Mycenaean culture in North Africa. And one of the viewers actually sent me some interesting information, you know, saying that we should be looking at the the burial customs, how they buried the dead. You know, that could be a way to explore this and um, put things together. So that was very interesting. So we've got some very interesting things to explore with the Persians and now with the Mycenaeans. And that's what we, um, we're going to continue doing. But remember how it also, we're not going to leave this map. We're going to keep working with this map. How does this connect with the history of this region? And to do that, in the next video, we're going to look at the, at the Trojans. So are the Trojans a part of this, uh, a part of the story that could help us make, um, we'll try and make more sense of this. So I hope you, um, enjoyed this video I think that's going to be going to be it um, yeah if you do have any questions if um, if it didn't make sense hopefully this part on the mythology was um, yeah let me know if that you that was um, if that made sense and we'll see you in the in the next part